everyone. We're gonna make just a short little video for you guys. We've had a lot of questions about how to wire up uh, some of these pumps that we use. This, these two in particular are for the pre-wash side. Um, we got two different brands here. Uh, one uh, is Little Giant, which is right here. The other one is March. Uh, we're gonna focus on wiring the March pump up. Little Giant's very similar. Uh, we'll post photos of what the wiring diagrams are and such, but the method overall is pretty much the same. There's another brand on the market, uh, Finnish Thompson makes a really good brand, so we'll show the part numbers of all three of those. Um, the Finnish Thompson is nice because from what I understand, I haven't bought one of those, um, but those are already pre-wired with I think a 20 foot cord. So we're gonna show that one as well and uh, it's had some good reviews as well. So we'll show those to you right now. focus on the March pump, so let's go ahead and unbox it first so we know what we're going to do. Okay. okay. So here is the March pump. You notice we got electric motor. In between there's a plastic, not aluminum, it looks like it might be aluminum, it's actually plastic, uh, basically a spacer, and then this is your pump mechanism for it. Um, over on the outside. So this is where your inlet pre-wash, in other words for us, comes into the pump. It spins magnetically because your magnet is underneath this housing and then your output comes out of here. Um, there are diagrams of how this is all set up um, online too, but uh, we're not going to get into that here now. We're just going to get into the wiring aspect. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's our electrical box. This is where our connections are going to be made. And so let's kind of take a look at that. We're going to open this up with our tools that we already have set aside and see what we have in there. Should be four screws. We'll take those out really quick. Do not lose these. They're very small and they can easily get misplaced. So we take these four screws out of here. We open up that cover, we'll set that aside. And this is the part that intimidates people. They go, whoa, what the heck is this? What do I do with this? So we're gonna look at our wiring diagram and uh, we'll post that um, online here or in the video. It's a single phase motor. In other words, it's going to be something that you can just plug into an outlet and it's going to spin. They also make a three phase motor um, those do not have this component on it. This is a capacitor hidden underneath here to make the motor spin in single phase. Three phase doesn't have that. But uh, we're going to do single phase at 110 slash 115 volts and it's very easy to wire it up. What we do personally is we then incorporate a timer as well. So we'll spin a timer and this then will only run for the amount of time that we select. It doesn't run indefinitely seems like some of our guys forget to actually shut it off and then if it runs for a long period of time that fluid in here can actually overheat it'll seize the whole uh, pump up there's a little uh, part that spins inside there and because it it heats up it expands seizes it up and actually can wreck the pump so we'd rather not do that we know these things are not free um, the replacement parts aren't free either so, uh, so that's why we use a, a timer. You might want to do that too. You know, you guys know what your business is better than I would. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of this wiring though. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of talk about the fittings that can be used for this. Um, there are two different fittings that we use. I personally prefer the style that's called a cord grip style. If you take it apart, you see it's got a rubber bushing in there which kind of seals tight around the cord. Um, I like that just because it's a little more weather resistant. Um, you never know what kind of environment you're going to have this in. The other one that's popular out there 
Um, it's basically similar, except it's not as weather resistant. So it just has a little uh, flap that kind of squeezes down on the cord when you tighten these screws. And we'll show you pictures of that here in just a moment. But uh, those don't seal as well. If it's gonna be in a super dry environment or it's the only thing you can find, it'd probably be okay. And maybe put some uh, like electrical tape or something around it um, if need be, just to kind of help seal it up. So those are kind of the two. Again, we're gonna mainly make our focus in the cord group or cord grip, I should say, for that. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna screw that into the box here. Um, this particular box is threaded. Not all of them are. Some of them just have a clearance hole that's like punched out. The wall is very thin. It's not uh, thick enough to actually cut threads into it, but this one is threaded. So we're gonna screw that in here to start with. We'll tighten it up with our wrench here quickly. And then we'll get to work on the actual cord. All right. So we're gonna take our nut off. We're gonna take our little rubber bushing off. And we're gonna take a look at our cord. So the cord that we got, the one that I bought, was a Flexzilla. Um, doesn't really matter which one you use. One thing I wanted to make sure of is that it was uh, a little more resistant to chemicals and liquids and things of that nature. Um, there are some rubber ones out there. The only thing with rubber is sometimes chemicals, the actual surfactants in the chemicals can kind of make that rubber a little mushy. So, um, so I bought this, but I mean, you can use anything that's, that's really decent. Um, so this one in particular is 25 foot. 14 gauge. Uh, we look at the motor and this says it's, it takes seven and a half amps. Well, a 14 gauge cord can handle 15 amps. So basically about two to one ratio. So this can handle twice as many amps as what this motor would draw when it's running. So just a little, uh, if you wanna call it safety factor, if you will. Um, but I have actually used 12 gauge in the past. It's a little stiffer, thicker wire to deal with and sometimes it's a little harder to get through your cord grip um, and this is going to be more than sufficient for what we are going to use it for so again 14 gauge uh, works good if you can get it in copper in my opinion copper wire is much better than aluminum which is also common but either one is going to handle the right amperage so let's go ahead and uh, kind of work um, see, this is the side that plugs into the wall what we are going to do is cut the other end off which sounds like we shouldn't be doing anything like that, but that's exactly what we're going to do. So, drum roll, and here we go. Oops. All right, so now we lost our end, so that's too bad. So now you see we've got an insulating uh, outer part to it, and then in the center are your three wires. You're not gonna see that probably, but we've got green, that is our ground wire, and we've got a black and a white. And those are what is called our uh, line wires. That's where our AC voltage is coming from. And those are the ones that are going to be our main wires are gonna hook up to our wiring inside here. So let's go ahead and we're gonna trim off the uh, outer part. Probably wanna trim off a decent amount, maybe about eight inches or so, so let's go ahead and do that at this time. Okay, so we're gonna take off the insulation. Again, we're gonna cut off about 10 inches or so. Sometimes that can be a little fun depending on how the wire or cord actually is made. Um, it can be kind of tight. So I just have a side cutters. Um, I like these, uh, Nipix is a good brand, but there are other good ones out there. We're gonna very carefully just kind of nick the outer part of that insulation on the outside here kind of work our way around. We don't want to get too deep because if we get too deep, guess what? We're gonna run into those wires. So we're just, just nipping that outer part of without having to actually physically cut it. So now by doing that, we just kind of hit the outside, just kind of bumped it with the side cutters. Now we've actually broken it. I don't know if you can see that in the footage, but now it's actually cut all the way around um, because of bending it back and forth. And uh, the outer insulation is a little more brittle and so it's going to actually break off. So now let's go ahead and pull that off. Ta-da! 
my work is done here. No. So now the insulation is gone. Throw that off to the side. Jake is going to clean that up later for me. And now again we see those three wires that we were talking about earlier. Now it's easier to see those. We have green. That is always our ground wire. Green is always ground. Then we have our black and white, which are our line wires. This is, again, where our power is for AC current. AC means alternating current. So uh, best way to explain it, it's kind of like it's uh, a tug of war, if you will. Um, one side is pulling and they're pushing, pulling and pushing. And if you like my dance moves, we can record another video for that later. But that's basically how AC power works, is there's a pushing and pulling going through these two wires. And that's what makes the motor actually spin. So again, so this is what we've got. Let's run these wires through our cord grip, which we've already installed. But to do that, we've got to put our rubber grommet on first. So, run those wires. through there. All right, so we've got that in there. I usually leave just a little bit extra insulation kind of sticking out so if it's moved around or jostled, um, the insulation will kind of protect it from maybe shorting against the inside. So once that's in there, we can tighten our nut down so we've got plenty of wire now to work with. Tighten our nut down with our wrench here. Okay, that's nice and tight. That wire's not coming out. So now we've got our three main wires and we've got a bunch of other colors. Brown, white, blue, orange, and yellow. Well, what do we do with those? Well, if you look at the wiring diagram that's going to tell us and so we'll flash that that up there but basically L1 um, that we'll just say is our black wire um, that's going to connect to T1 and which is blue according to the chart here and T3 is also connected and then we have a couple other wires a T2 and a 7P uh, and then your T4 is a yellow, and that connects to your uh, white wire there. So let's go ahead and kind of figure that out again. Make sure that we've got approximately the right length. So I'm gonna cut these about the same length. More work for Jake. And in this particular motor, we're already stripped back. The insulation on the wire is already stripped back about three quarter of an inch. So let's do that for our white and our black wire. Strip this insulation back about three quarter of an inch. And we're going to twist that. All these connections on here, we're gonna twist that wire. So let's go ahead and just twist that and get that ready to connect. So we've got those set, but before we actually connect those with wire nuts, we're gonna focus on our ground wire. If we look inside, we're gonna see, it's hard to see with where we are, but if you look inside, I don't know if you get a shot of that, Jake, but there's a little screw that's green in there, and that is our ground. And that's where this wire, our green wire, is going to connect to. And what that does then, is if for some odd reason, either the motor shorts out internally or wires short out here, that prevents us from maybe touching it and going Whoa! anything like that. We don't want that. And so what this does is it shorts that out to ground and will trip a fuse or blow a circuit breaker or something like that so that you don't get harmed. Maybe water even could do that. So that's it's very important that that wire is actually uh, wired up properly. So for that, 
we're going to strip just a smaller amount of that, about a quarter of an inch only, and we're going to use a little lug. So it's a round terminal connector. I'm not sure if you're getting a shot of that, but we'll obviously be posting photos of this anyway. So we're gonna use that, and we're gonna crimp that thing on to this wire. And this is a special one, and we'll show you what makes it special, but let's go ahead and do that first. So again, we strip it back about a quarter of an inch, like we did here. Twist it, like we're doing right now. We take that lug, we insert it, wire inside of it here. Then we have a special crimping tool. Um, this one has a little bit different setup in that it's got a raised piece. So as I squeeze down and crimp it, that raised piece actually squishes this even more so. Um, this is a better quality one. Um, this, this is a snap-on, but there are many different good quality brands. I know that they sell a lot of those at like Home Depot and, and such too. So and we're going to crimp down on that right now. Do that, okay. So we've crimped down on it just to test it. We're yanking it, it's not coming off. The other thing that we can do with this one is this actually has heat shrink tubing on the outside. So if we apply some heat to it, this outer cover right here is actually gonna shrink down. This is gonna shrink down onto the wire. So you can use a little torch like I've got here, um, or you can use a hand torch, just something to give it a little bit of heat. So we're just going to heat that up. And man, that really happened quick. So we just heat that up. That shrinks down on the wire. I don't know if you can see that any better than it was, um, but that shrinks down nice and tight. And so now we're to the point where we can actually fasten it to that little screw, because as we know, that's a little teeny screw and it's recessed in that box. And when we unscrew it, it has, first of all, a chance to get lost, which usually happens when I do it. And secondly, we have to put that thing back in the same hole and make sure it's not cross-threaded or crooked as we put it in there. Um, this one in particular, the, uh, the screw actually um, is able to be taken out with a quarter inch drive. Um, I find that a nut driver seems like it holds a little bit better. So we're gonna do that uh, in this case. So a combination of a nut driver and then maybe my hand um, on this ring connector holding that wire steady. Uh, maybe we'll have success. So I guess we get to see it on film. So that's, isn't that great? Pressure's on. So let's go ahead and take that off. We're taking that off here. See, I put my finger on it to hold it in place. Little teeny screw, green again, as we were talking about earlier. We're going to attach that ring connector on it. And now at this point, we have to, I don't know if you can see any of that, but we have to get that back in that same hole and make sure that it's straight. which I have done. See, that's what happens when you have an expert like myself working on this. It does it the first time. Oh, talk about lucky, I'm telling you. So we're going to set that up. We're gonna make sure that our wire is tucked in place, that everything's gonna be out of the way when we hook everything else up. So hopefully you're getting good shots of my forehead on that, which is very impressive. All right, here we go. So we're tightening that up. So our ground wire is nice and tight. That's gonna protect us in case there's a bad emergency. So that's great news. So now we're done with that. Now we're gonna actually use our wire nuts and uh, kind of connect these wires together. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab those wire nuts. So we're gonna move along and we're gonna do the probably most scary part uh, that seems to intimidate a lot of people when they're doing this. And that's the actual connecting rather of the wires. Um, they think that if it's not done right, lightning's going to shoot out here, and they're probably right. So we want to make sure we're doing this right. We don't want any lightning out of here. We don't want any smoke. Um, when I was in electronics, they said that was the bad thing, is once you let the smoke out, it's hard to put the smoke back in. And uh, kind of a, like, 
electronics joke. But anyway, so as the key says here, we're going to focus on low voltage, or in other words, 115, 120 volts, whatever the case may be, whatever they call low voltage. That's what we're gonna focus on. And so for this one, it has three different connections. So we have our three different wire nuts. So we're going to figure out what those connections are. In this setup, uh, our black wire, we're going to consider our L1. So the black wire that's coming from our cord is going to be our L1. Connected to that, according to this chart, is T1. And this key says T1 is blue. So we're gonna grab our blue wire and connect it to our black one. But it says that there is another wire that's connected, T3. And in this case, it says that T3 represents orange. So we're gonna grab our orange wire, our blue wire, and then our L1, which is our black wire, coming from our cord. We're gonna connect all three of those together with our wire nut. So we put those, again, we strip those back about three quarter of an inch. Uh, what I like to do is just kind of twist them a little bit together. And then after that happens, we spin that wire nut on there clockwise. I don't know if it works counterclockwise. I've always done clockwise. I'm going to spin that on there. And once that basically locks in place, you can kind of feel it. It gets to a point where it doesn't want to spin anymore. Uh, what I like to do is I like to tug on each wire separately and make sure that they are all tight together. And that's what's supposed to happen when you have this thing spun together. All right, so that one's connected. We're gonna set that one aside for now. Let's look at our next connection. It says T2, in this case, white. This is the part that could be confusing. The white wire we want to use is the one from the motor because if you remember, we have another white wire coming from the cord. Do not use that one. We're gonna use that one later. So we look for the ones coming from the motor. So that's this one right here. The white wire coming from the motor. That's connected to, odd name, 7P2. I don't know why they don't call it just something else, but they don't. And that represents brown coming from the motor. So according to this, the brown and the white coming from the motor are connected together. So again, now we use our other wire nut. Just like we did last time, we put those two wires together like this, give them a little bit of a twist so they kind of get familiar with each other, and then we spin that wire nut clockwise, if you're me. All right, so what do we have left? Well, interestingly, we have the white wire coming from the cord and the yellow wire coming from the motor. What does the chart say? T4, which is yellow, aha, is connected to L2, which is the white wire that we've picked coming from the cord. So these are the two remaining wires we have left, so we did it right, that's awesome. And so we just do the same thing, hold those wires together, give them a little bit of a spin, take our wire nut, spin it clockwise. All right. Again, give those wires a little bit of a tug. Hold on to the wire nut tightly. Give those wires a tug. Everything should be good. If for some reason you pull one of those loose, for some reason it didn't get tied up tightly when the wire nut was put on or unraveled, whatever the case may be, just spin it off backwards. Do the whole setup again where you spin those wires together, kind of twist them together, and then put your wire nut back on. So now we see that we've got our wire nut on every one of these wires and we've connected it for a low voltage. All right, so there's one little trick that I always do. Um, I learned this way back when I was in vocational school about 85 years ago, it seems like. Um, and that's to make sure that, as we know, the motor's gonna vibrate, things are gonna move around, and there's a small chance that these wire nuts could possibly come off. We hope that isn't the case, that we've done everything right but we don't want those to possibly fall off and then short against the side and cause issues, maybe melt down the motor. We don't want that. So what I do is I just take just a short little piece of electrical tape and I just kind of wrap it a little bit around the wire and around the wire nut. So it doesn't have to be terribly long. Um, 
I guess I should answer this. What electrical tape do I use? You can buy the cheap stuff, that's true, but for a few pennies more, um, I always buy the scotch, the good quality. Um, I found that it sticks better, it also expands better. Um, it lasts better in environmental issues, especially with heat, because motors heat up and uh, the cheap stuff seems to kind of get brittle and break and dry out. Um, the Scotch brand doesn't really do that. So my recommendation, if I'm doing any wiring, I always use a Scotch brand products. So anyway, so let's go ahead and we'll do that. If you ever use this, you'll notice, like I said, electrical tape kind of stretches. So you just kind of do a little bit of a wrap around it. And then another little trick that I do is I just fold the end over a little bit. Why do I do that? See, there, there's a little tag kind of sticking out there now. I don't know if that can be seen at all in the video. But basically, the next time, if I ever have to pull this apart, because of the heat that's in there, it does kind of melt a little bit together and gets kind of sticky. This way, I can unwrap it really quick by just grabbing that tab and just unwrapping it and getting that, that tape out of the way. So I always leave a little bit of a tab, just a, a little trick, if you will. For you too. So let's go ahead and wrap the other ones up here. Again, just wrap, starting at the wire, work my way around to the nut, wrap around there, a little bit extra, bend over about a quarter of an inch, finish wrapping. And let's do our final one here. Wrap around the nut. Little extra. Bend over the tab. All right. So as we can see, now that's stuck on there. We got our little tabs. If we ever need to tear it off, it'll be real easy to rewire it. So those are all stuck on there. So now the next thing we've got is to actually tuck those wires into the box, which we can do. I like this box. There's plenty of room. Some of them that I've seen in the past, there's just no room. And so you have to almost keep your wires really short and uh, it makes it really difficult to work with. But in this case, there's a really good quality setup here, which you would expect from a company like March. So now the wires are tucked in the box. Everything is tight. Our ground wire is firmly attached. So we don't have to worry about that. So we're almost done, right? So now we've got this little rubber gasket that goes on the outside and the cover. So let's go ahead and do that at this time. Okay, so we got our cover, we got our rubber gasket, which will help seal that cover against the housing. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we come back to our little screws that we have made sure we did not lose. So let's go ahead, put those in one at a time. Put those in by hand just to get them started. We'll tighten them up later with our screwdriver. But we want to make sure these are lined up properly. So, again, one at a time. Make sure that they line up with the holes in the rubber gasket. All right, so those are nice and tight. We've got everything set. So the question is, is it gonna work? And for that, we're going to have Jake plug it in and I'm gonna stand over there and make sure that I'm safe. No. So let's go ahead and just kind of test that really quick. We're not going to run it for a very long time. Again, this is totally dry. The motor is lubricated by the fluid that runs through it. So we're just going to test it, make sure that we're not getting sparks coming out of it. And again, like I said, it's running dry. So it's gonna make a lot of noise because it's not being lubricated by the fluid. So let's see if we got sparks. that sounds good we didn't see any sparks coming out of it it's working great so that's good so Jake got off the hook <laughs> I did it for him so that's how you hook that up but your other one um, that we have here the little Giants gonna be very similar uh, the principles are gonna be the same the actual colors that you connect um, you're gonna have to see that on the chart and then like I mentioned earlier the finished Thompson 
uh, from what I'm told is already pre-wired but uh, these work awesome for pre-wash because they're magnetically driven they're not directly connected so there's no way that the chemical can actually make its way into the mechanism or even into the motor and that's really critical so great pumps and uh, happy wiring thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next time